So now we're gonna, the battery is finished, set up. Uh, I started out with the raw battery, um, a, B, a BSM that I attached to this battery. Uh, down here is the connections C minus and uh, P minus. And, and actually on this BMS, it shows on a schematic, it's you connect them together. So I just connected them to the P minus. Uh, and this is a negative. And this is a positive. I taped the end so it doesn't short out. The battery is basically set up. I put these uh, remote uh, battery cable mounts. So what I'm going to do is uh, hook the positive side to the positive, this negative from the BMS to the negative side, and put it in the case. And it, then I'll go on to the next uh, of assembling the, uh, the components for the uh, solar uh, system. So let's uh, get the battery in there. This, uh, this battery box I got off of uh, Amazon. Um, basically a, a deep cycle uh, fishing battery box, but it'll protect it in the shed. And uh, once I get it in, then I'm going to plug in this, and it will be powered.
this final step, I'm going to put this protective cover over the top so that nothing grounds out in the battery box. fit here but we'll get it in. Now, the battery is protected from any short circuits from the hardware. a little bit later and there we go the built battery now I'll test it and see how it's working Point four or five volts. The battery is fully charged because when I did the uh, test with the, the uh, battery management system, I had to discharge a little bit so I could see if it was low uh, temperature pr uh, s sensor was working. So this is uh, completely set up. Completely set up for uh, the next phase of uh, actually installing it with the. Uh, hardware for the solar. Um, I'll connect uh, the uh, inverter to this here. So on with the next. Well this part of the project is finished. I installed the solar controllers and, this, and the uh, solar panels in the shed. And it works perfectly. The battery showing showing 13.6 volts, so it's charged. Right now it's running 7.2 amps. Yesterday in full sun, in the middle of the day I got 19.7 amps. are putting out 29 to 30 volts 98 watts 
and the battery is 13.6. The inverter is running. So I'll put a load on it this time and uh, see how it does. Everything seems to be working okay. The next phase will be running uh, the LEDs off this uh, DC uh, fuse box and the negative box over there. See it right there. So until the next episode, which might be a little while because I have to gather the LEDs and decide exactly what I want. Um, well, thank you for watching this and um, until later, bye. Well, I'm to the point where I'm going to install this panel in the shed and connect the battery up after I cut the cables. You have to have a minimum run to the battery so you don't lose uh, energy on heat dissipation. So here's a summary of the equipment and where I purchased this, these items. First of all, these parts I purchased for this off-grid project. I'm not, I am not endorsed by any company or website and get no money or monetary gain by mentioning them. I'm just letting you know where I've sourced these off-the-shelf parts for this project. The book I used for this information I needed to do this project, I got off Amazon. There are many books on this subject there. Uh, the book I used was Mobile Power Made Easy by William Earl Prowse the fourth, Will Prowse. He has a YouTube channel and I would advise you to look him up because he has a wealth of information on the subject. The solar panels I used are used and I bought from a solar installer. And there are probably one or more in every big city in the country that sells recycled panels for cheap. I bought a basic setup that included solar panels, connections, MPPT solar charge controller, and some fuses, wiring, and some other odds and ends that you would need to set up your system. But there are other parts that you have that you have to source and the book I mentioned and his website will help you there. I got the raw battery off of eBay. It's called Calb. And I added a battery management system from SockBattery.com. S-O-K Battery.com. Because I was interested in building my own battery. But there are other vendors that you can purchase from that have the BMS incorporated already and can skip that step. Just do a search for LifePo batteries, which is what I use. Can use AGM sealed deep cycle batteries and other lead acid batteries, but your cost that but your cost that you would put into your system will vary, and I decided to go with the best long-term solution. I purchased the inverter off of Amazon, and there are many to choose from, so do a little research on the inverter that you need. In my case, I'm going to use Going to light the shed and backyard with LEDs, which is not really need of an inverter, but I also want to run some power tools like a table saw, etc. Hence, I needed the inverter. Miscellaneous uh, four, six, and some other gauge wire, some tools to work with 
the, that size wire and electric, electrical crimp connectors along with some fuse blocks for low voltage LEDs. Uh, it's best to make a list of items that you would need and buy all at once. I did some math to figure out what size I would need and this system can be added to in the future if, I need, if the need arises. All in all, it was a very good learning experience for me and opened my eyes to what you can put together at a really modest cost. I did try to purchase USA made equipment, but you will find there's lots of it is Chinese in origin right now, but there are US companies that are starting to step up to the plate and offering US made equipment and maybe more in, well in the future. Uh, I will post this video in a couple episodes to keep the times down and we'll post more on the LED installation in the future. If you like the solar installation series, let me know and I'll try to plan more like it in the future. Uh, I have to make, you have to be safe using doing this. Um, DC voltage and AC uh, amps will kill you. Um, I'm just showing you how I did it. Uh, I can't take responsibility for how you do it. And um, I can't be held liable for any damages that you cause because maybe you didn't do it right. And there's probably, the way I did it is fine, but there's probably better ways to, to do this installation. So uh, this is Garage Gadgets, bye for now. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And um, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. And I'll be, try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. Uh, bye for now. Mm -hmm.